Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Menu of TrueNet, and welcome back to the adventures of Julianus Vitinius, or as it's also sometimes known, Rome, Total War, ah, Julianus Vitinius. I honestly feel like they could have picked a better portrait for a 22-year-old, but whatever, our uh, bold hero. You know what? Caesar was bold, or rather, Caesar had very thinning hair anyway. Uh, when he was that young, he probably had a little bit more hair. But yes, he did famously have thinning hair, that was certainly true. So, uh, yes, you know what? I feel like he shall be our Caesar. And today, I suspect we have got a fair few battles to get through, watching our allies hopefully fail, and watching ourselves hopefully succeed. But first, I've got a few things I need to take care of that I missed last time, actually within this very turn. Uh, one over here in... Is it in Salona? No! I found that 16-year-old that I missed and then forgot to actually look at where he was. Uh, Numerius Brutus, a new member of the Brutus faction, has shown up here in Apollonia. Presumably he is indeed the son of Cassius the Lewd. So, uh, would you believe he's not the best guy in the world? He's alright. Uh, trusty increase to bribe and plus two slot is decent. Mildly extravagant. Well, whatever. Benevolent ruler, plus one influence, minus one from squalor is good. Indifferent builder, that's a bit of a shame. What can you do? And sharp is all right as well. Now, I'm glad this is the case, however, because it means I can actually hand over Cassius the Lude's good quality stuff to this kid, because he's getting on a bit, Cassius the Lude. He's 50 now. It is time for that to all be passed on. So if I pass on all of that stuff to the new guy, excluding the use of stuff I don't actually want, I will give up on the tax farmer. Mathematician is good. Librarian's really good. Um, Eristratus is... Uh, well, um, minus one morale for Ultric on the battlefield, plus one to public health. Yeah, you know what, I will move him over, that's fine. Uh, so as a result of that, our new kid now goes up to looking decent, looking alright. Plus sharp is a really good trait. And sharp, if that grows to intelligent, if nurtured by giving him academies and whatever, could be very, very useful indeed. So I kind of want to move him to... Uh, hmm. I could move him up to Segestica. That is kind of a frontier town. Uh, I could do with, you know what, I'll build an academy. Yeah, you know what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build him up. I'm going to move him over to Segestica. And when time comes, I may well move him over to Batavium as well. Because Periandros is 54. He's getting on a bit too. So I wouldn't mind also passing on some stuff from him to this kid as well. So let's actually move that kid, Numerius Brutus, who's okay and I think could become better. He's currently got a retinue of... Five people. Five people is all right. Yeah, we'll move him on, and we'll just kind of move him up in this direction. Marvellous. And he'll head over there to go up to Segesca. Segesca's the one with the ridiculous mining and commissioned it. Yeah, 875. I suspect ultimately, by the way, Numerus Brutus will end up managing Patavium. And actually, Segestica will probably be better managed by... This kid over here, Lentilus Brutus. I wouldn't mind him, because he's got the mining engineer... If I could move him up to Segestica, that would actually be worth a decent amount of money. Then we'd have two good quality kids guarding the northern flank, which I could actually deal with very nicely. So I might actually just start moving him in that direction anyway, to be honest. But in the meantime, he could actually just hang out in Salona. I think Salona's got good quality mining. Salona's got alright mining as well. Yeah, let's move him to Salona for now, and instantly we'll just queue up an academy there as well. Yeah, we'll move him in that direction, and as a result, we will actually, in the near future, have some really good quality generals hanging around in this sort of area. And you can move up there, and it's going to take you, sadly, two moves to get there. That's fine. And Batavia, meanwhile, we have got a new building we haven't seen before. The final level of the temple, the Pantheon. Pantheons are really, really cool, because basically you pick a god to go down the route of, but I think this is Roman and Greek only. When you get up to the fifth level, the, um, the epic huge city... Uh, temple, it becomes a pantheon, which basically means it's still primarily dedicated to the god that you dedicated it to. So this is a pantheon originally dedicated to Juno, but is now for all the gods of heaven too. But uh, as a result, like, it's still mostly about public health and happiness, but also there is now one level of increase in tradable goods, i.e. because Mercury is another one of my options, and even better, experience bonus to troops trained here, plus two. So even if you went down the Juno or the Mercury route, you still get plus two to troops trained there, which is still really, really damn good. That's still the equivalent of, like, a level three Temple of Mars, whereas, weirdly, the increase in tradable goods, I think, is only a single level. Actually, let me double-check that. I mean, it doesn't look like it's, uh... Hang on, if we just build that... Yeah, it feels like such a modest increase. I think that's just plus one level. So we'll get that going. Instead, because of all the ones I've got completed, that is going to be cheap to build. Yeah, it's really cheap to build. 4,480 denarii in only five turns because I've got so many wonders over in the actual east of the empire, which is very, very good indeed. Get rid of the rest of you expand stuff there. So yeah, we'll get a pantheon there and we'll just keep training up. And I think very soon, because Periandros, his time on this world is limited, I suspect. Advantage slash disadvantage, depending on how you choose to read it, of having like arenas and games and races 
race in your city, by the way, is you end up with like uh, generals being gladiatorial fans. Now, it looks good. Minus one from unrest, plus 10% to your popularity with the people. It looks really good, but it can get out of hand and generally it can go wrong. That's like fine, but like many traits, anything taken to an extreme is a bad thing. How are the British getting on, by the way? What are they doing with themselves in the minute? They don't seem to have expanded for quite a while. They seem to be quite happy with their current size of empire. We shall see what they decide to do next. I'm actually almost a little bit worried. All the cities look like they're pretty empty. So where are the British armies gone? Still, the trap is set. Time to see how the Egyptians respond to my little gambit over here, sending our favourite hero, Spurious Scapula, over to attack Palmyra. Potentially, now with a fort in the way, the Egyptians won't be able to relieve it particularly effectively. And if they try and relieve it, well, Julianus Vertinius is ready to sweep in and attack Damascus, which the Senate would like me to do anyway. Plus, I think we've got some fights to watch with our friends and allies as well. I suspect the Scipiones are going in for an attack momentarily. Anyway, let's see what happens next, shall we? How's the brute? Oops, sorry, I just had my assassin bumming around there. Didn't actually have anything for him to do, never mind. And don't forget to move that guy towards Dimity. Thank you, game, for moving over all those troops. I forgot to actually move. Lovely. Hopefully, that guy will be able to make it over to the city momentarily and watch that siege as well in time. Now, uh, Julii not doing anything of interest and- ooh! Hello. Ah, yes, good. That's exactly what I expected to see. Uh, so over here, this is at Tingi, isn't it? Yes, over here at Tingi, we do indeed have the Scipiones, a small force, not exactly a great force. Like, it's mainly, they do actually have some Triara, but this is an old school force, not a single new unit here. Together with one unit of Equites, so their leader is Equites. That's going to cause trouble. But they do have Triari to deal with the enemy general. Taking on a Numidian force of, ooh, desert infantry. Well, we know how bloody tough they can be when they put their bloody minds to it. They've got a bunch of archers, but they'll probably use them incorrectly. They've got long shield cavalry, and they do have the factionaire who is... Uh, I don't think there's anything there that gives him benefits to morale, but... Factioner, that's just flipping 70 heavy cavalry to be chewed through. If they get lucky and they use their Triarii correctly, this will go fine for them. But long shield cavalry are pretty tough as well, to be honest. Right, we'll see how this goes. This could really swing either way. The Numidians do not have a good track record taking on the Scipiones. So we'll see if they can kind of, you know, in some way undo the dishonor they suffered last time. Right, keep my own troops over here. And now just move my troops around the side so they're not distracted by me. No, no, no. Don't bother going for that. Don't bother guarding this gate, all right? I promise. I absolutely promise you. What are they guarding? I think they were trying to... Yeah, they were trying to guard this gate because they thought I might be at this gate. Luckily, it's just... I think that's the... Yeah, the Long Shield Cavalry and Warning of Desert Infantry. The Numidians have plenty of strength here. They do outnumber the Scipiones significantly as well as having defenders advantage. They really should be able to win here. The Scipiones simply don't have very much. The advantage they've got is they've definitely got the superior infantry. Infantry can carry the day quite nicely. And, ah, oh, just they haven't built the walls again. I think this is a... Uh, this is a level 3. Yeah, Governor's Palace. This is a level 3 city. But they just didn't bother to flipping build any good walls here. If they'd built some actual decent walls, they'd be doing much better. But sadly, they have just stuck to basic crappy wooden palisades. And as a result, look. Look what's trying to defend the city here. Nothing. Some crappy little watchtowers. Right, let's just speed things up until they get through the gates or the walls. One of their rams caught fire, so they have one less entry point than they might do otherwise. They still have four. That is absolutely flipping plenty. Though the advantage is they now can't really kind of send a force smashing in from the left as I look at it. So... Right, are they ready to move in in a minute? Yes, they are. Right, let's see what's going on here. Hastati going in first, and as we've seen before, it's just flipping javelin men trying to guard the front door. That's not going to work. They're going to break so easily. This is not the force they wanted. Archers are in a stupid position. For goodness sake, Numidians... I think they are determined to lose this battle once again. The general can win this battle by himself if and only if he can stay clear of the Triarii. One unit of Prinkipes over here taking a few light knocks from a tower. Nothing too bad, but they'll take some knocks there. In come there. Into the archers. Because they've decided to guard the breach with archers while flipping spearmen just stand at the back literally idle. The game is flagging them as idle. I mean, for guys, come on. I mean, the one advantage you've got here is they've now decided to go and try and reinforce, but they've just thrown away the archers. I think the Numidians are just the world's stupidest. Ah, but another group of archers are actually firing into the Starty, which is good. 
but probably they'll stop firing now because they're worried about hitting their own people in the back, which is a shame. In comes some more... Right, what have we got here? Yes, as suspected, the javelin men just kind of broke immediately. So as a result, the triarii have just basically pushed straight in there. We've got some desert infantry who have routed immediately there, and another Numidian javelin men there who have just routed... Possibly, I just think the Numidians are just the worst faction in the world right now. They deserve some form of special badge of dishonour. Though actually, to the advantage it would appear, the Romans have decided to try and commit their cavalry into the one spot where they're actually not doing very well. But the Triarii are about to hit the desert infantry and there's probably about to be a mass route triggered here. Yeah, you're broken. Broke. Yeah, fine. So basically, through the world's most incompetent layout of their troops, the Numidians have actually managed to turn what should have been a grinding slow hold into a pretty much total rout. So well done there. I mean, okay, okay, don't panic just yet, because what's going to happen now is the Equites, having gone into the city, are probably going to get ahead of everything else and hopefully get themselves killed. The problem now is the Romans still have the vast majority of their infantry, and the Numidians don't really have anything left to actually, like, take out that infantry with. Because they've thrown away all of the desert infantry that could have pinned it in place. So, that is unfortunate. Sandy, what's still hanging out over there? What's still hanging out over there? One unit of desert infantry. You know what, lads? I think you're the smart ones. You have detected that when the Scipiones get involved, your countrymen are just idiots. Right, as we might have indeed suspected, the Equitas have got themselves overexposed. But what are they trying to take on? Well, obviously, they're trying to take on archers because the Numidians decided to leave their archers as the new front line. Because the game just wants the flipping Scipiones to win. Like, you know, when I was taking on the people of Pontus, this didn't happen. The game didn't just decide, you know what? I'm not going to cover my breaches with skirmishes and archers. No, 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 no. Proper phalanx and heavy infantry were set up. Really intelligent attacking and retreating takes place. But the moment you're taking on these flipping guys, and incidentally... Looks like, yep, next up is the flipping militia cavalry, so another unit has just been sacrificed to the meat grinder. This should have been a nice, easy victory for the flipping Numidians, but they've managed to turn it into what's now looking like an almost unavoidable win for the Romans. Marvellous. The one advantage is, those Equites are down to half strength and falling. If their leader falls, then that'll be a big morale punishment, and as a result, there's just one good charge from their leader on the final plaza, together with the fact that, yeah, they've still got the long shield cavalry and they've still got the general's armor bodyguard. It looks really, really bad right now for the Numidians, but when someone still has the heavy cavalry advantage, never count them out. And the Equites have decided to run, but their general is not dead. It's a disadvantage, but it's not insurmountable. So now all the Romans have got is a massive great long line of infantry coming up on the plaza. Triarii seem to be at the rear, which is good because that means what's at the very front? Hopefully it's just Hastati. Now that should work and they're tired. These are tired Hastati as the front line. You just weaken those guys a little bit. A good solid cavalry charge, they could break. And the javelins just keep coming in. There's just a decent amount of peppering fire here. Hastati down to, yeah, 118. What's coming in next? It's just flipping militia cavalry. Fine, they're going to go down very, very quickly indeed. But it would appear that the... No, the general's going in. The general is going in. This will be the moment where I don't think he got a good charge in. And he's right at the front line. That's the general. He's right there. Okay, he's being covered now. But no, he's not. He's pushed himself right forward. The general is determined. Flipping determined to get himself killed. And generals in this game do not flipping fall back. They will just stand and fight and crunch and pull in, damn it. So, oh, he's, I think he's managed to get himself protected a little bit. The question is whether these Astarte are going to break. Down to 60. They're shaken, but they're not wavering yet. And these generals are going to just get slowly worn down. They're down from 70 to 65 already. Something else is already breaking. I mean, this is buying a bit of time for just, oh, flipping peasants. Oh, marvellous. Good old peasants at the back there. This is buying time, but... Oh, the Equites are back! The Equites are back, but this actually works because at this point, the Equites can just get themselves completely destroyed by the heavy cavalry. So the Roman general might be about to get himself... No, they're straight back out again, damn it. <laughs> they're not here for this. Uh, no. At this point, they needed a good solid charge to cause a mass break. That is not going to happen. Eager, eager, eager. This could not have gone better for the flipping Scipiones, quite frankly. Let's speed this up. This battle's as good as over now. That's a real shame. Uh, yeah, look at the general. He's just completely surrounded. 
Uh, he's just going to be slowly chopped down. He's just totally surrounded by troops. He'll die in a second. One unit has broken, but it's not enough. And the faction air dies. And at this point, what do the minions have left? Basically nothing. They've got one unit of long shield cavalry. They've got whatever is on the plaza at this point, but it's not much. Another flipping unit just broke. Oh, there's actually a good solid charge going on here. Oh my goodness, what? No! Oh my goodness, it's happening! There was just a really good solid charge. Those long shield cavalry have just gone in and they have just utterly shredded the road. Oh my! <laughs> yes! Oh my goodness, look at that! I I sped this battle up because I said it was over. But one single charge from Long Shield Cavalry has just flipping destroyed the Roman army. And the morale has collapsed and just look... Oh my word. I thought this was all over and it certainly is now. And off they go. That in just like just that one heavy cavalry charge. Just it was a really good charge has just annihilated them. This is a this is a pyrrhic victory on both sides, damn it. Allies killed 80%, enemies killed 77%. And at this point, there is just simply nothing left. There is nothing left at all. I think the yeah, that's it. That is all the Scipiones have. They have been pretty much wiped out to pretty much the last man at this point. And now are the cavalry actually genuinely coming to... Yep, they are coming to retake the gate to see if they can stop me doing anything. I suspect actually this force has been so badly destroyed it will cease to exist on the battle map. And now it's just time for me to withdraw and that'll be the end of the fight. Yeah, the Scipii army has completely withdrawn, and now what remains of the Numidian force, albeit it will recover nicely, of course, plenty of their casualties will recover, though sadly, their actual, yeah, their faction gave his life for this victory. He gave his life, and if only he'd done the charge the Longshield Cavalry did later, they would have won. Oh, I'm amazed. Like, I genuinely, like, you know, I always say bail on the guys with the cavalry, but even I didn't think they had a chance. A defeat! So many good Romans have died for no purpose! Yeah, but they weren't from our family, so it's fine. Yes, indeed. What an interesting fight. Men deployed 1,395. They got 1,400 kills, but only 47 men remain. And meanwhile, as for the Numidians, 1,816 men were fielded. They got 1,340 kills and 600 men remain now, but they will be able to retrain. Beautiful. The Scipionis have been held at least for now. So my troops retreat to friendly territory and ooh, yes, okay, no, no, stop playing the sad music, this is a new battle, play the exciting music. As I half suspected would happen, the main force cannot make it over to Palmyra. A small side force, however, can, which means now they've tried to relieve the city, but that means, yeah, just a small bit of the Egyptian force has now been drawn around the outside of this fort, and as a result of that, I can now take on the actual force that's in the city out in the open field. Now, what is the force that managed to make it over to me? It is... Yeah, three phalanxes, some basic Nubian cavalry, nothing major, and also damaged. Some basic guys. Not a single unit of archers. Chariot archers. Oh, wait, is that chariot? No, that's Egyptian chariots, not chariot archers. Uh, right. So, basically, no indirect fire whatsoever. Oh, yes. This is going to be a nice, easy victory for us. Uh, stop playing the sad music. We're going to win this one, and we wanted to lose that last one. Better and better, it feels to me like, yes, of course, they're going to be attacking into us because they started this battle. Looks to me like we have got ourselves a nice little uphill advantage here. If I just kind of draw up, yeah, maybe, yeah, about here. About here will be absolutely fine. Incidentally, the crossroads here, we've got a little crossroads, though admittedly, could do with some signposts. Some signposts would be useful, so when you get to this T-junction, you know which way to go. But we can indeed just see the city. We will ultimately be taking over over there. Palmyra is just in the distance. So we know where the reinforcements are going to be coming from. They're going to be coming from over there. So if I'm on this side of the battlefield, they'll be tired by the time they get to me. And we should be able to take care of the main force before they even do. Right, pull back. This is a bit of a scruffy force, but it will certainly do. Uh, what we're going to want is... Yeah, okay. We've got, actually, we've got our first early legionary cohorts here. Look at these magnificent tough bastards. They will chew for whatever we put in front of them. Marvellous. Now, I'm going to have the hoplites right at the side of this battlefield, basically ready for any chariots that kind of move around to the flank to just be kind of struck again. So that will be absolutely fine. Incidentally, let's just quickly loop together all of our infantry. So this army is very, very scruffy indeed. That's all infantry, right? Yep, that is all infantry. Group that, ungroup it, and now it's next to each other here, which I find a bit useful. 
We've got War Dogs here to release when the time is right. We've got Spurus Scapula himself right in the middle. We can have... I think we'll have... Probably there's a good chance the strength won't be on that side. I'll put like some cavalry ready to go in this direction. But I'll put the majority of my Equites strength on this flank where I suspect we'll have a bigger problem to deal with. That should be the lot. Yep, group it all together in case I need to move it later. And forward. Now, what have we got here? Ah, okay. The hoplites actually are probably required on the other flank, to be honest. Guys, 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 pause for a second. Right, hoplites, uh, come out of that mode, please. Just unpause you do that. Marvellous. Now, I need you to come over here. And then, uh, like, about, yeah, that should be about right. Come over there in a hurry, please. And I need you to be running because that is where... The chariot's potentially going to swing in from fine. Bear in mind, of course, yeah, hoplites can only run outside of their phalanx formation. If you need to move in a hurry, move them out of the phalanx with that little button there, and then move them back in later. So they're now just running across here. In a moment, my archers should start firing, because, yeah, these guys are going to be quite significantly downhill. These poor desert axemen are going to be torn apart. And by the time the chariots get close to me, we'll have phalanxes ready just in case they get too close. Because the game actually... Ooh, actually, I hadn't noticed that before. If you hover over chariots, they are classed as heavy cavalry, suggesting potentially that, yes, indeed, they would be counted as... Oh, you poor bastards. You utter poor bastards. You are going to break before you get even close to me, aren't you? Yeah. Eager. I don't think you're eager. Right, you're there, right? In which case... Phalanx down, ready to deal with anything else. Yes, they've broken immediately. The chariots are charging in. That's all absolutely fine. How are you not broken, quite frankly? They will... Yeah, they've already broken. The chariots are moving in. In comes the... Oh, that was a waste of peeler, quite frankly. Guys, just keep on firing. Lovely. Oh, that's such a waste of peeler. In come the chariots. If the chariots come in, they'll kind of hit these guys in the side in a second. And when that happens, yeah, you're backing off. Any that touch this hoplite right here will immediately break and 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 already broken because they just smashed into that. That's 100% fine. My archers are backing off because they're in skirmish mode. Those guys are just going to be annihilated. Let's just get my horses ready for the flanking maneuver here to get around the back of that phalanx. There's no need to flank around here, quite frankly. Everything's already under control. They have decided to try and send their... Oh, they've tried to send their Nubian cavalry after my cavalry. Actually, that's fine. If they want to do that, this is going to go horribly wrong. They're already wavering the Nubian spearmen because they're basically militia hoplites. So their morale is quite bad. Send my horses... Yeah, send my horses around the back here. Uh, these are going to briefly touch against the chariots, which will do them a bit of damage. But it's worth it to make these guys break. Back out now. Back out now. Back out now. Let's let the uh, chariots hit my infantry. Oh, yeah. The Equites takes so much damage from the chariots. But that's fine. Those guys have already smashed into my infantry. The infantry will just start chewing through them. They are already wavering. They'll kind of do a good job disrupting the formation. But once I hit the side of them, yeah, they've already broken. And now I can just send my remaining light cavalry in to chase them down. Because my light cavalry are faster than chariots are. Marvellous. And indeed, we can just go after them. I suspect I'm doing damage to my own Equites with my archers here, but that's fine. I'd rather just make sure these guys go down just in case. In which case, actually, uh, archers, go for the Nubian Spearmen that haven't broken yet. And now we just ride down the chariot. In we go. And they will just start falling apart. Beautiful. Though, admittedly, I think chariots even, like, when they're fleeing, because they've got the spikes on their wheels, they can actually do damage to cavalry. So, I'm you might see kind of, like, my odd horseman actually going down there. But we should do pretty well. Yeah, there we are. Their leader's dead. Marvellous. And their chariots are going to be wrapped up as well. I think at this point, everyone is pretty much dead. This was nice and neat. But, don't forget, we've got reinforcements coming in from the other side here. So, guys, flip the battle line around, please. And if you can, run. Actually, with the exception of you, because your position in the battle line was actually wrong. And incidentally, one unit of archers was utterly annihilated. But don't worry about that. Oh, I think you might have got caught out by some Nubian spearmen. Right, you guys. Come over here, in fact. We've got the reinforcements coming in from the city. And the final Nubian spearmen from the original group break. Marvellous. My archers retake up their position. And now it's just a question of what is left. We've lost a lot of Equites here. But, which is a bit of a shame. Where are the other Equites? There might be some more who broke and then recovered. Yeah, there's more that broke than recovered here. Let's just bring them around the bag. The War Dogs have not yet been released. We could just release them at the Chariots, to be honest. 
Right, Hoplites, get your spears down. What have we got over here? We've got just a couple of chariots that have decided they want to get over towards my uh, Equitus by the looks of things. That's fine. This unit is... We'll probably take a fair bit of damage here, but these this will be worth it. This will be absolutely fine. Uh, this unit is going to smash straight into the Hoplite again and thus break immediately. So I may as well just go after these guys straight away and then just swing around the back. No, they've already broken. It was a tiny, tiny force. It never stood a chance. Let's just ride down the um, chariot so I don't have to deal with them in the town. Make sure they are dead. As long as 80% of this force dies, we won't need to deal with it again. Just get this tiny unit of Equitus around the back here. This is no Spearman. They will be a little bit tougher, but not much tougher in terms of breaking. When their leader's dead and broken, they won't do very well. And when they're surrounded, they'll not be happy. In the back, that should be the end of them. And down they go. Continue the battle. I want to make sure these guys are all completely dealt with, please. And just keep these guys moving, please. No archer fire. And now my archer should... Yeah, go after these guys. I want these guys ridden down, damn it. They should be more tired than you. Yeah, you're warmed up. They're winded and you're faster than them anyway. So head after these guys and we'll finish them off. These guys are now chasing down these guys. I think that's the last of what's actually here. There's a few things over there. That's the tiny army. I think that's from the army we already took out because these guys need to retreat towards the city. No, come on. Get after them. Finish them off because we'll actually... If we can just destroy this entire force, we win this city, damn it. Come on, just a little bit faster, just a little bit faster, come on, come on, take them out, there we are, there go a few, there's, there we go, well done, few of them taking out the last second there, marvellous, well done. We lost more equitas than we needed to, but to be honest, I'm kind of just throwing them away to ensure a clean victory. I'd rather keep the infantry and the archers in pretty good shape. I mean, the archers took a few knocks, but the infantry is basically alright, and that's the important thing. Yes, indeed. Of 2,400 men fielded, 2,200 are still here. We got 1,200 kills, and they should both have been wiped out enough that we should hopefully be able to walk to the city. But sometimes when it's a city force, the game kind of doesn't really count that way. And even if it's like, you know, just one man makes it back, you still have to fight that city fight. But if that is what happens, we shall see. No, it looks like we've taken it. No, have we taken it? No, okay, they've besieged that. No, we have indeed captured it. And they have besieged the crappy, crappy settlement of nothing. Right, we're exterminating this population, though, admittedly... It's only small. I could just go in and... You know what? I'm going to take it. I'm actually going to take it because it is actually a small settlement. It's... Yeah, it looks like there's only about 9,000 or something people there, give or take. We could enslave it rather than actually destroying it. You know what? Let's actually move in and take it. This can actually be a proper city of ours. In kind of recent history, in our own history, Palmyra has suffered enough. Let's actually give it a bit of a break for once. Occupy the city. Marvellous. The... Ooh! Are the Armenians actually at war with the Scythians? Like they were just going north. The only thing up there will be more flipping Scythians. The rebel pirates have just done me a bit of a favour there, which is they've actually just flipping taken out the Thracians that have been bugging me. You, incidentally, you have a you have a decent-ish force. Oh, yeah, you should just be able to walk in there. Do you actually have a general with you on this occasion? Through here. Marvellous. Popularity falls with the Senate. That's probably just because they're too worried about me being too popular. Senate floor. Yes, indeed, my popularity is ebbing away, but my popularity with the people is just going up and up and up and isn't life good. So we don't know what's going on over here anymore. And if I'm lucky, my force can indeed. Yes, my force can go and join in with this siege momentarily. They've got... Ooh, bull warriors. Bull warriors are great fun. Basically, they're like really, really hypercharged to starty, if you like. But this is a small little force. We'll see who manages to win here. I'll be, it looks like the uh, the Julii are sending in reinforcements, so that's fine. Where did the actual main force go, by the way? There's now a decent garrison there, and a crappy garrison there, and a crappy garrison there. Fine, so possibly this siege might be the one to watch as well. Richest faction is Britannia! I have no idea how that's calculated, but apparently that's true. And Syra has grown. Good, we can make that a proper honest Roman city. That's good to hear as well. Faction announcements. We've got Julianus Scapular. Oh, wait, no, Julianus Scapular is the bad one. It's Julianus Vertinius who's the good one. No, Julianus Scapular is the terrible one, who I just sent over to Pergamum to desperately send him to school in the hope that education would improve him. But, you know, it, it has done a little bit. He's picked up a priest of Mercury. He's got married. He'll have some children. Ooh, Oppius Victor has just picked up an elderly spinster aunt which is a, wait are you you're married aren't you now dear i'm sure your mother wouldn't like that minus one influence plus one management okay so we've got some kind of extended family member who follows him around giving him annoying advice i don't know why that why is your elderly spinster aunt here hang on let me see if i can figure that out right over to the family tree um obvious brutus there you are 
Um, it's not because you've got an unmarried sister who got too old and couldn't be married off and thus follows you around being annoying. Because of the children, there were three boys and one woman, Paulina, who did get married to Spurious Scapula. Um, so... Yeah, I'm not sure why you've picked up that one, and maybe it's just bad luck that you picked up that one, that's a shame. Also, I question Oppius Victor's naming children policy, given he has three boys and one daughter. He has got uh, Marcellus Brutus, age 10, his first child, his second child, Titus Brutus, age 7, and his third child, Secundus Brutus. Oppius, we, we need to talk, okay? Like, if you'd called him Tertius Brutus, I'd have been fine with it, but Secundus? Also, I may have just slightly overexposed myself here. Uh, obviously, the large forces I thought they would have decided to attack the little fort that we've actually got here, uh, who I may or may not choose to try and relieve. But if I do, that's going to be a major and serious battle. We've got a new problem here, which is... Uh, Passe Backhain Neos Philopate has just actually shown up with... Well, it's probably a damaged army because it looks about half strength. But I'm concerned that when you start throwing all these forces together, the Egyptians suddenly have a lot of forces here, and uh, poor Spurius Scapula is now Palmyra all on his own, with a very old school army he can't really do much to repair. Incidentally, let's have a look see how Palmyra is actually doing. Uh, strength seems decent, we can- ooh, apparently it's good enough that we can- no! No, we can't actually retrain our early legionary cohorts here. What we can do, however, is presumably uh, give them some superior- Weapons? Yeah, because right now they... Yeah, they don't right now have the blacksmith upgrade, but we do actually have a blacksmith here. Fine, so we can make them a little bit better. We've also got... Okay, so you don't have a legion barracks or a cavalry stable or an archery range here. So this is a very underdeveloped city, to be honest. And incidentally, um, the game sometimes makes the bad choice about what walls around a city. So you may have noticed during the battlefield, when we looked over to Palmyra, it looked like it has stone walls, but it doesn't actually have stone walls at all. Incidentally, we've got... Ah! This is interesting. Uh, they never sh shut down the original religion here. So at some point, this place was held by an eastern faction that built a shrine to Zoroaster. That's probably the Parthian. So Palmyra was probably briefly held at one point by the Parthians, probably after they took it off the Seleucids. Then it fell into Egyptian hands, and now we've finally taken it. So let's get rid of that shrine to Zoroaster and instead build ourselves. What's the growth rate around here? Growth rate is not exactly spectacular, and the population around here is decent, but there's no military infrastructure. So, actually, this might not be the worst place in the world to actually have as a military training place. Could do, you know, but if we did, we'd have to build all of this up, which is going to take such a lot of time, it's not going to work. No, we're just going to go for Juno. We're just going to go for Juno and get this place growing a bit faster. We'll retrain you guys, and we may as well get some better quality cavalry coming in. You can train that here at least. Anything else we've got here? Diplomatic information, the Numidians, the House of the Brutii are at war. Egypt and the House of the Scipii are at peace. That's not going to last. I feel like the Scipiones are very slowly sending forces over here. They want to take over Siwa here, and after that's done, they are going to have flipping eyes on the rest of it. And incidentally, a small force has just been sent out here. Let's see if we can just see off these guys. Oh yes, that is eight men. I think we can see off these guys. Marvellous. So, this force can now go and besiege Alexandria's port, which works for me. Probably shouldn't do that. It kind of gives them warning that I'm actually coming. But, we can now get our forces all the way over here. Now, the question now is, uh, what's going to be the best way to get them to attack next turn? Probably, it's actually, I'm not sure whether I can even... No, I can't get my forces in here. So probably it's going to be putting them ashore like here next turn and then hoping they can make it all the way around to Alexandria. But Alexandria is basically unguarded right now. See, there's Egyptian chariots and they are gold chevron experience, but gold chevron experience guys will still go down very quickly when it's chariots. Because even with gold experience, they're only defense eight, damn it. So, you know, we can just pick them apart with archers and whatever. That will be absolutely 100% fine. My original hope was that the Egyptians wouldn't realise what I was doing until it was too late. But now, actually, the opposite thing occurs, which is I kind of hope they do realise what I'm doing. Because if they realise what I'm doing, they'll kind of divert some of this massive force down here straight back down to the south. And other than that, nothing major. End of turn report. A few people occasionally ask to see the end of turn report. There is the end of turn report. Now, how good is this leader, by the way? He is 35, not exactly spectacular, but he is threatening us. Right, Valerius the Killer, make up for your failure last time. 61% chance here, and we've also got the Factioner in there, but don't go for him. Instead, yep, down he goes, but this army does still have a leader, because the Factioner is still there. And we also get a good view of it. Ooh, it is an experienced army. It's not huge, but it is well experienced. In fact, actually, 
going and attacking these guys. And incidentally, now we can actually look at their thing. Uh, yeah, you can see after Marius, uh, he's no longer in a chariot anymore. Now he is on, like, some elite heavy cavalry. Which is not exactly spectacular, to be honest. Like, you know, it's pretty damn good. But, like, there are certainly better heavy cavalry units in the world. Now, if they're factioners right here, together with just some, well, some experience, but still basic crappy phalanxes... One unit of archers, pharaohs, bowmen, fine, those are really, really damn good, but they're at, like, half strength. Together with not much, I feel like, actually, rather than trying to relieve this place, Spurious Scapula, the best thing you might be able to do is actually, instead, march straight south and smash into this guy and try and take him out right now. And incidentally, let's move my spy up here for a second just to get a better view of this army. So this army here that's besieging this tiny, tiny little fort is... Yeah, skirmishers. Quite a lot of chariots, weirdly. Don't know why they've got so many chariots. Uh, damaged Ferris Bowman. It's a pretty full-strength army from the banner. So most of these units are going to be at full strength or close. Yeah, we've just got to break these two armies, but then even after that, flipping Jerusalem's already in bad shape, damn it. So, and Damascus needs to go down at some point too. I bet that's a nice Greek thing, and there is indeed... Ooh, the faction has moved up to Damascus. He's relatively exposed there, isn't he? General. Yes, that's intriguing indeed. In fact, actually, I would say Julianus Vatinius needs to actually move forward, not just to the... Um, kind of the crossing here, try and lure them into that, but instead he could move forward properly. Yeah, that's intriguing. If he was just to move forward and just straight up just like, you know, stand here and just be like, what? What are you going to do about it, huh? What are you going to try and do against me? I am Julianus Vatinius. I am fated to become the greatest Roman of all time. I am the Caesar of my generation before Caesar was even born. Bring it, you Egyptian bastards. He'll, he'll say something like that anyway. Um, and if we brought him there, we could actually also reinforce his army a bit with some better troops. Yeah, I feel like the army of Sidon, possibly we could just potentially bring some of that up to help out Julianus uh, Vatinius there. Just checking, by the way, that your troops can... Yeah. So if I bring him to the corner there, the troops in this city can totally join up with him. And potentially, that would actually work better if I just kind of sent some of the mercenaries down here to Sidon, which isn't immediately under threat. And instead, sent a very large force here just to stand here, ready to move in. That actually might be worthwhile. Are you planning to attack immediately, by the way? We haven't built any siege equipment, so you're not going to attack right this second. Right, first things first. Uh, yeah, Julianus Vatinius, pick the troops that you actually want to go with. And have you got any better? By the way, I think you might have even got better. No, I think you're about as good as you ever were. Right, take the troops that you do actually want to bring with you, which is going to be, yeah, the Roman, the new Roman troops. Absolutely, you bring those with you, fine. Uh, just take those together with, yeah. So start those. So now you've got yourself a decent, solid starting point for infantry. So you move over there. That's fine. Now we need to send him some reinforcements in terms of just infantry. While it's not the best stuff we have got, I would say three solid units of Principes, together with some Triarii, will do a good job in terms of just a basic front line there. So he does at least have a basic good solid amount of experience there. He does have some Cretan archers with him, but the problem is they're not the most experienced. These Cretan archers are a lot more experienced. Let's just quickly... Actually, you know what? Top up these guys here. And yep, they managed to maintain all their strength, even though I diluted it slightly. So three really experienced units of Cretans move around to join him there. His unit of Cretans, he kind of got emotionally attached to these guys. So, you know, him and them, they've got some, like, you know, they, they've got history. So, uh, that is absolutely fine as well. We could, I do with also sending him the Rodian Slingers, because Rodian Slingers are absolutely badass. And incidentally, we've got some more Rodian Slingers here. Sure, send him loads of indirect fire. Indirect fire is fantastic. Uh, next, he's got to have himself some cavalry. We've got some Roman cavalry right here. There's some more Roman cavalry actually here in this army. So that's looking pretty good as well. It's not much cavalry, but it'll have to do. We'll send him the Equites and the Arab cavalry so he's got some light, fast backup. That's actually pretty useful as well. And then finally, oh yes... The Sarmatians. Some nice mercenary cavalry to round out the cavalry figures. Now, now this is an army worthy of Julianus Vatinius. Alright, and make sure you say it that way because that's really flipping important. And the rest of the force just heads to Sidon because 
I suspect no one's going to be attacking there anytime soon, but let's not give them the opportunity to. So, we have now got not exactly a new model army ready here to move in, but a very strong army ready to take on anything the Egyptians are going to be able to throw at it right now. So, let's make our decision there in a second, because I think, speaking of the new model army, incidentally, just keep improving this area as we pass by. Yes, an archery range will do very nicely there. I just want you to know, by the way, that a very special, important army has just actually set out from Asia Minor to join the front. The war pigs are coming, ladies and gentlemen. They're coming. Meanwhile, over here in Greece, we have got good news, which is I think we are pretty much ready to start fielding the first full, proper, modern army here. I've been working on this for quite a while, in fact. So, what we have got here is, yes... Early legionary cohorts, two experience from Sparta. Could be a little bit hard for Senator Larissa, but that'll do for now. So, we've got ourselves five units of good quality stuff there. Doesn't need to be trained in Corinth anymore um, at their flipping uh, armor, because now we've got an armor over here in Sparta as well. Over here in Corinth, we've got a very, very healthy number of archers that do need to go down south in order to be retrained in Sparta. So we'll send five archers down there for retraining. They're beautiful. Just retrain those lads. Roman cavalry over in Termon have been finished, so we'll send them over to Sparta as well to be retrained. We can also get that done right now. Beautiful. They also need to... Ah, that's annoying. They can't actually be quite done this turn, so I may as well keep training something else instead. Just get some auxilia built up, but they'll be ready very very soon indeed larissa meanwhile has legionary cohort very well trained because we've actually got the awesome temple of march at larissa they can go to corinth and be retrained there so we'll get the good quality weapons and armor on them there train some more archers on top of that as well and incidentally, just for fun, I've been training some Velite gladiators over here in Athens that I can actually send down to Sparta and retrain together with some early legionary cohorts and go on, why not, some war dogs too. They can kind of just join the queue outside Sparta to be retrained as well. So very, very soon indeed, once all that is done, we will have a very, very solid army ready to move over to the Middle East. But in the meantime, we've already got a very solid army, albeit the final of the old school armies ready to go as well. So let's just send that over to Rhodes and a safe port there. And then next turn, that can start making it over. Oh yeah, that'll be hitting land in a very good place in only two or three turns. One very good army there. That is going to be nice. And incidentally, we're going to need a new fleet to escort these guys down. So I'm just going to build some more boats here at Kedonia and Rhodes and all of that good stuff. As soon as we've just got all of these built, this will be very nice indeed. And up in the north, meanwhile, we are ready for the end of the Thracians. I would say Spurus the Ugly moves in with a scruffy old school army, but it will do the job. Illyrian mercenaries ready to be picked up. Beautiful. And now we just take the cream of the crop that we've got here at Porolissum and prepare to move against their final city. Now, when I say the cream of the crop at Porolissum, um... We don't have much here, to be honest. We've got some good quality archers and whatever. We've got the siege equipment and the Sarmatian. Sure, absolutely. Hello! Flipping Thracian assassin. No, 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 no. Hang on. Uh, Luca Cassius. Good. This will be a good one for you. Just move this army up first. Spurious the Ugly. You move up here. Incidentally, build yourself a watchtower. Lovely. But my baby assassin here with only 1 out of 10 for subterfuge. Taking on a 0 out of 10. 64% chance... And down he goes, and that makes him a bit better. So now he should hopefully be up to... Yep, he has picked up Cutthroat. Good trait for this sort of a guy. Porolisum, by the way, can have... Oh, I haven't bothered building mines at Porolisum yet. I didn't realise there was uh, gold here. Or possibly I did in the back of my mind. I forgot. No, it's Bylizora that doesn't have gold. Porolisum did. I did actually know that. Fine. Uh, large Temple of Juno. Probably best to just build some highways here. So in the event of problems in the north, we can actually move around our troops pretty quickly. Because these are large territories up here. But I'd say Spurus the Ugly is ready to finish off the Thracians once and for all. And on that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we should end things off here. But next time, next time is when a lot of things are going to kick off. I would say the forces of Spurus Scapula are probably going to head south and see if we can take out this Egyptian army before it can gather any more strength to itself. 
On top of that, can the Julii take this here Spanish town and can the Scipii take this Numidian one? At this point, we have got one humiliating defeat for Numidia and one humiliating defeat for the Scipioners. It's going to a deciding match. Let's see what's going on there. And on top of that, my flipping forces will be launching their surprise attack against Alexandria and hopefully moving straight on over to Memphis as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, a huge amount to come very, very soon indeed, as well as Julianus Vertinius's first battle. And will that not just be a thing of marvellousness. If anything, I just have to be careful. I have to you know, save my game because I suspect the moment Julianus Vatinius hits the battlefield, it will just be so awesome my computer might just crash. We shall see. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. This has been Many a True Dead, and this has been the adventures of Julianus Vatinius. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Here, have a hat. Oh, you don't have a head. I'm sorry. That was really insensitive of me. Oh, I don't want to interface with whatever this is, but all right. Oh god, he's running Windows 8. No bloody wonder it's all gone tits up. Fire extinguisher, if it's a choice between you and me, I'm afraid I'm sacrificing you just FYI.